With our arrival at Port St. John's, we were staying at the Jetty River Lodge. Just before you go over the Port St. John's River, you turn left and it's not too far down that road on the right hand side. It is sitting on the banks of the river, which allows you to do some grunter, garrick and cob fishing right there from your doorstep. The resort absolutely caters for anglers. With enough freezing space, big log cabins for groups and smaller rooms if you're only a couple of guys. They also have a little restaurant and a pool. Now this is just another home from home and ideal for anglers coming from all over South Africa every year to fish this unbelievable Port St. John's waters. Port St. John's is known for several great catches every year. Garrick, cob and a lot of shark species as well as the grunter and the shad. This is but to name a few of the species. One of the things I love most about this area is the absolutely indescribable scenery. It makes for the best footage as well as photos. William's been here many years and really, really knows this area well. Cheers William. And many roads to travel that takes you high above the water with incredible views. The dolphins cut off a pocket of sides and they got them in the bay here. Let's go. We get our spinning stuff and get going. There are so many fishing spots in this area. At least one for every weather condition. Punskop is one of the very well known fishing spots. And what better to arrive at such a picturesque fishing spot. And the sods are everywhere. With smashes right in front of the rock. Okay morning viewers. There's a massive pocket of sods that the birds are chasing. So everyone's going with spoon. I'm going to be a bit different. I got a plug. I got a chaos plug, a two ounce chaos plug. Uh, Daiwa Vidal 4,020 pound J bread, and I've got the Saltus Power Spin uh, 12 foot 6. So I'm gonna give it a bash and see if I can maybe get, maybe, maybe get a Garrick or whatever else he's chasing the shoal here. But obviously, these dolphins have heard of this a pocket of sand in here quite close, so they moved out again. So there was a little boil here in front, a pocket of small sand, uh, or a small pocket of sand, and then they moved away now where Andre is throwing. There's a lot of activity, you can see the chases there. Let's see if we can get something. While we were running up and down on the rocks, the drone anglers got their gear sorted out and started taking some baits out. And it wasn't long, because it was in line where the bigger shoals of sardines were moving past. They started going tight one by one. We had a try at the sides that moved in here and out, here and there, but uh, it seems like there's only dolphins chasing them. Uh, they came in quite close, we had a few shots into the shawl but uh, no takes on the plug or spoons. Uh, one of our anglers got a shad on plug. So I'm going to put that shad alive out. Hopefully get a garrick or a cob. Uh, okay so the trace is a normal return slide. About a meter long and 270 mustard uh, soys. The new soy ring mustards. So that's how the trace looks. I'm just waiting for the guy to bring my shad. It's there in the bucket. And then the rod and reel, the uh, saltest 14.2 cast, which is the heavy. And then I've got the Saltica 50 HA with 5.2. It's a bit heavy for what I want to do, but uh, it'll serve the purpose and do the job. Okay, so you can see I haven't thrown very far. Obviously the edibles are quite close here. They come and feed just around that rock. There's a little point there. They come in around that rock and they feed in this area. So this is sort of the bay. So I place my sinker sort of just next to that rock on this side. And we'll put that light here in this area here. Hopefully a Garrick or Pop comes past and grabs it. Okay, so this is uh, a good size shad. And uh, just with the hands a bit. I'll show you how we're gonna rig it now. So what I do is I've got, you've got the little nostrils there of the shed. I take the hook, I put it in there. Comes out there, so that, that part of the shed's very hard and that hook doesn't come out in a hurry. And then that hook there is gonna go in the back, that's there, okay? And 
that's it. Pretty much it. If you've got that other hook that's quite proud, you've got your carrier hook which is holding the shad there. That's like that's gonna stay alive for a long time. Okay, so let's get this out. Just hanging around in the front there. I'm just gonna get a bit higher and try and get the shad a little bit further. Alright. chance with a few shad there. This is just how we fish for shad. I know it's not the, the, the normal way but the shad are very close and uh, he's struggling to hook there. So what I've done is I've put a double hook trace with just some floats, big floats and uh, I've got circle hooks on. Little circle hooks. Those one or two -oh circle hooks and uh, they tend to work okay for the shad. So it's a little piece of sod. We're just trying to get some shad for live bait. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Linton also concentrated on the non-edibles and quickly got a bite. His fish just suddenly stopped fighting and we could all guess what happened. Yes, it got taxed by something a whole bunch bigger. Yeah, how's it guys? Uh, we are at uh, Spoon Scop, just north of Fort St. John's. Um, I dropped a bait with a drone, I saw that I was getting a lot of bites, so I decided to drop a bait with a drone. Uh, I dropped a whole bunny, went fast, and then fish fought a little bit, and then just came in easy. But what happened was, this prey got properly taxed. You check that. Uh, if you look at that bite, we we suspect it's a Zambo that chowed it. So um, we're gonna put another bait and try. Unfortunately, we can't release it. We're gonna release it, but uh, clearly it didn't make it. Short guys. Uh, ocean chomp. Uh, just one bite. But that looks like a big grey or a big uh, Zambi or even a, maybe a white that took it while Linton was fighting. Now the guys with the drones, obviously the shark meat is fresh. It's got a lot of smell, that ammonia smell in it, with a lactic acid buildup. And where he bit it, that blood's still in the water. So it's perfect putting a nice chunk, not big, a chunk like that on, on, on your hooks and they're going to take it out on the drone, they're guaranteed. The sharks are wild, both me and Dean are still persisting for a garrick or a cob, uh, trying to get a nice edible on the board. But I think uh, in the next hour or so, we'll be stupid not to, to put bigger baits. In fact, we didn't bring much shark tackle or traces because we came for the cob and the, and the gary. But uh, eventually we're going to have to to give in to the sharks and maybe get stuck on them. Alright guys, now this is obviously, as you know, probably the most exciting part of the year in South Africa if we're lucky enough to experience the sardine run. Now we haven't had them right in yet. There was a couple of small broken pockets here that uh, that uh, came close enough where we put spoons on, but the big shoal was sitting in the back, so all the fish were on there. 
and that became quite clear now with the gas dropping big bigger base here it's going so every bait that goes doesn't lie for 20 minutes that the guys drop with the drone because that's more or less where the sods move through now what happens is the dolphins everything they obviously have the speed they stick with the sods and they smash them to bits and all their dead shed uh, dead sardines and stuff fall to the bottom and then your your sharks and your other fish come and pick all of that on that trail they pick it up so any bait these guys drop this fish following that trail that whole trail of smell and dead sardines and pieces of sardines and if your bait's out there you're getting a pull um, now like I said this morning myself and Dean decided we're going to persist for an edible so we are behind this rock there's a, 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 a kind of an isolated section there's a rock in the water there and we just I'm just to the left of it and he's a bit further left to it to look for a Gary or maybe a cob the water is very clear and it's daytime so the cob small chance but with the sardines the rules change where the cob might come in there were small pockets of sod here this morning maybe they were shared around and took a couple of pieces and created enough smell here for a cob to come in and come and have a look here which pick up all that pieces of sardine that's everywhere now the, the whole thing here is just to persist obviously these guys are going to get a couple of shocks every bait they'll drop will get a proper pull um, and it will be a variety of fish you don't know really what to expect I mean um, I won't be surprised one of the rods one of the bites unfortunately they've missed most of the bites only one Linton got one out um, but all the rest of those I think there were four bites already four or five and they, they either got bitten off or they lost it they didn't get the hookup but one of the bites looked like a proper decent edible even maybe a kuta who knows um, but really you can get anything you can get tuna you can get kuta you can get uh, kingies in in the sardines like this there's a variety of bonitos and and game fish that follows it as well as all your predatory species like your sharks your skates your rays they're following slowly in the bottom and picking up the trail as well um, it was so quick you can't believe how quick those sardine shoals move with those dolphins hitting them but in any case we're going to carry on this morning we're going to see what else we get so watch next week to see uh to see what uh, else comes out here there's one drone bait that had a bite now but it's it's dropped it again and i'm sure the guys are rigging up to to put more drone baits out so at least we show you we'll show you guys some sharks in the area that's that's on that trail and uh, hopefully myself or dean can get stuck into a nice gary or a or a or a cob we've both got shared out we managed to get there was very few and far between here in the morning managed to get one and Dean managed to get one so we've got two shared out just uh, behind that reef where it's a bit secluded for the sharks we're fishing straight nylon or fishing a circle a tuna circle mustard on the front hook and on the back hook I'm using a, a ring soy mustard uh, on straight 0.80 uh, fluorocarbon the Siglon fluorocarbon <coughs> with a side trace not a non-return and almost side trace so the shade can move around here and uh, that's for best results my drag is totally loose on here for the Gary you don't want them to feel there's any any suspicious uh, resistance so that's why I'm holding the rod as well so I hope so up and uh, I'm using my new Saltiga 50 HA and you've got point five five on it's rigged for for the non edibles and I'm fishing that on the salt is 14.23 14.23 foot um, the multiplier rod which uh, fantastic sliding rod and uh, just using it for that purpose I didn't even bring my grinder I brought the two small spinning rods with spoons I was in uh, the mindset of popping if we didn't get live but to pop for some uh, Gary throw plugs and spoons to see what what we can lure in but yeah so catch us next week maybe we can show you guys uh, some really good fish <laughs>